All right, today I'll introduce matrix multiplication. So this is a little bit different from adding and scaling matrices. So if A is an M by N matrix and B is an N by P matrix with columns B1 through BP, then AB is going to be M by P whose columns are AB1 all the way up through ABP. So a lot of letters there, a lot of variables there. Basically, we have A being M by N B being n by p, so if this n matches with this n in b, then the resulting matrix is going to be m by p. So that is the result. And this only happens if the number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in B. So what we can see here is that little formula. If we have a matrix A times a matrix B, we turn B into its column vectors, and then we distribute the matrix A to each of the column vectors. So that goes to B1 all the way through BP, and then we end up with just a bunch of multiplication inside the matrix. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. So A is 2, 1, 1, 3. B is 4, 3, 6, negative 2, 1, and 3. So let's multiply them together. So we have AB and... Just quickly, we're going to skip a step here. So we have A times B1 through BP. So we're going to put A and multiply it by each of the column vectors there. So we're going to take this 2, 1, 1, 3 and multiply it by 4, negative 2. And this will be the first position. The second column vector will be 2, 1, 1, 3, multiplied by the vector 3, 1, and then 2, 1, 1, 3, multiplied by the vector 6, 3. So we just broke it down into something we already know how to do. Because we know how to multiply a matrix times a vector, ax equals b, so now we can do it a nice quick method. So um, 2, 1, 1, 3 times 4, negative 2, that's 4 the first column, negative 2 the second column, so we're going to get... Um, 8, 4, I guess I'll write this out nicely. So 8, 4, and then 2 of this, or negative 2 of the second one, so it's going to be minus 2, minus 6. The second entry will be 6, 3, plus 1, plus 3. This last one will end up being 6 of the first column, so that's 12, 6. Then we add 3 of the second column, which is going to be 3, 9. Let's make that nicer. So our result is going to be 6, negative 2, 7, 6, and 15, 15. So that is how we multiply matrices. And of course, what I should have done first is verified that yes, these are compatible. So let's see, A is 2 by 2, and B is 2 by 3. These two match, so our resulting matrix will be 2 by 3. And yes, it is. So let's find B times A. Well, let's do this thing that I forgot to do last time, which is check to make sure the sizes are compatible. So B is 2 by 3. A is 2 by 2. This 3 and this 2 are not equal. So this does not exist. Therefore, you cannot multiply the two together. And I highly suggest when you do my practice exam on treptutor.com that you take this into consideration when doing some of the problems because there may be an intentional problem there to trick you. I didn't say that out loud though. Okay, so now that we know how to break down a matrix into matrix vectors, uh, there is faster ways we can do things. And this is called the row column rule. So if we have a matrix a, B, and we want to find the ith row and the jth column, then we can do some fancy multiplication. And this is the nice notation for it. We take AI1 and multiply it by B1J. We take AI2 and multiply it by B, B2J. And the notation isn't friendly, so learn this notation and what it means uh, formally in just a second but for now we'll show you an example of how we do things so you can think of this notation a little bit nicer so let's say i want to find this first entry here so this is going to be 
the AB11 entry. So what I take is it's called the row column rule for a reason. So we take the first row and we multiply it by the first column and we add the entries. So if we take a look at this first formula, it's going to be A11 times B11 plus A12 times B21. So this is going to end up being 2 times 4 plus 1 times negative 2. And that will be the first entry here. So that's going to be 8 plus negative 2, and this will end up being 6. So if I write this out a little bit more formally in the next example, so let's do the bottom entry here. So this will be the AB23 entry. Okay, so let's write this out a little bit more formally. So it's the 2, 3 entry. So I want to take the second row of A and the third column of B. So this is A21, A22. This will be B13, and this will be B23. So if we take a look at our formula, we do AI1 times B1J. So the I and the J referenced here correspond to the numbers that we're look or the entry that we're looking for. So 2, 3. So i is equal to 2, j is equal to 3. So we start with a21 times b1 uh, b13 and then we add a22 times b23. So this entry in our lower right is going to be 1 times 6 plus 3 times 3, which is 6 plus 9, which is 15. And we can do this for every single entry. In fact, this multiplication is the same multiplication I showed on the last time. So let's take a look. 6 and 15, exactly the same outcome, which means that this method seems to work. We haven't, well, we've proven that it works in a sense. But just to make sure these are consistent, we do the same example twice with two different methods. So I challenge you to figure out the rest of these positions and write out the formula while you do it so you know exactly what you're doing. It really is uh, pretty straightforward. So if I want to take, um, for instance, this position here, this is the second row in the second column. I take the second row of the first matrix, the second column of the second matrix, and then I multiply and add the corresponding entries. So I multiply the first entry in the row by the first entry in the column, then the second entry in the row by the second entry in the column, and whichever positions you do, you just pick those. So that's the row column rule in a nutshell. So here's some properties of matrix multiplication. So A is going to be M by N, and B and C, they're just going to be matrices that work. So these B and C matrices will be n by p, p by r, whatever they have to be to make sure that this multiplication works. So the first one is that if the multiplication works, multiplying b by c first will get you the same result as multiplying a by, c, a by b first and then by c. Um, if we have matrices, then the distribution rule still works. So a times b plus c is a b plus a c. If we have b plus c times a, it's the same as b a plus c a. I like to note really quick that the order is still preserved. Even in this case, the order is still preserved. Notice how there is no commutativity. So that means that most of the time, a times b is not the same as b times a why we already looked at this example so we could have an m by n and then an n by p so that's fine but if we switch the order and we have n by p and m by n then this does not work so switching the order will not always work um, fourth property if we have a scalar multiplied by two matrices then we can 
multiply the scalar first into A, or we can move the scalar wherever we want and multiply it first into B. In other words, scalars can be done whenever. So if you take a scalar out of a matrix because the numbers get too large, you can put it back in whenever you want. And the last property is that if you take the identity matrix and multiply it by some matrix, then you just get that matrix back. So if we take I n by A, we get A back, which is the same thing as A times I n. So this has to do, so an M by N matrix. So if you multiply on the left, it has to be I m. If you multiply on the right, it has to be I n. This is just the way that multiplication works. So make sure that is consistent. So let's prove one of these properties. So if we have A times B times C, this is the same thing as A times B times C. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to let C equal C1, C2, all the way up to Cp. So we're going to break down C. Then we're going to multiply it by B. So here is B times C. And remember, we just put B into each of these column vectors. So this isn't the row column rule. This is the first way I introduced it. So this will be B times C1 b times c2, all the way up to b times cp. Okay, so we have that. Now we can multiply a n. So this will be a times bc, and this is going to be the same thing as a times bc1, a times bc2, since again we can just distribute inside all the way up to a times bcp. So, now what can we do? Well, here's the thing. A times BX is actually the same thing as AB times X. So, using that, we can group together our A and our B, and then multiply by C, because this is just the same thing as AB times C1, AB times C2, all the way up to AB times CP. And this just equals AB times C. I really should keep these two grouped together for this step. So that is the proof that it is associative. So again, you might have forgotten this word. This is the association principle, or associative principle. So this shows that as long as you keep them in order, you can group them together however you like in order to do the operation first. Okay, so that is the one proof we have. Uh, the other proofs follow the same method, so I'm sure you could do it if you tried, but it's not necessary for me to prove them all for you, so we'll just move on and quickly touch on powers of a matrix. So A, B, C, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E. Um, you can multiply a bunch of matrices together, but sometimes you want to perform the same matrix over and over again. So these are called the powers of a matrix. So just like how you'd have uh, 3 to the 4 to resemble 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, uh, the same thing works with matrices where we can specify A times a number K and that means that you multiply the vector by the matrix k times. So this akx is just multiplying the vector x by a k times. So this can get a little bit difficult to do computationally. In fact, if you were to do it computationally on an exam, you probably wouldn't go above a3. And if you did, it would be a theoretical question. So you'd have to prove something and not, comp uh, not compute it. Um, you'd probably be using a program online to to compute anything above a3 or a2 just because the process is a little bit ridiculous so here's the question what is a0 of x um, the zeroth power of a well let's remember what happens when we take the zeroth power of a 3 that's just 1 take the zeroth power of any number it equals 1 but we don't have 1 as a matrix what do we have instead of 1 um, a0 
is just equal to the identity matrix. So this will be the identity matrix because that is our one in our sense. So A0 will be equal to the identity matrix. So this A0 times X is just equal to the vector itself. So if I ever want the zeroth power of a matrix times a vector, then that just means I want the vector back. So here's three things we need to be careful about, and this will be the last slide. Uh, like I said before, AB is not equal to BA in general. There are cases where this is true, um, but it's not always true. In fact, more often than not, it's not true. In fact, about 95% of situations on your exams, this will not be the case. If it is the case, you got lucky, or the question was designed so that they would be equal to each other. Second, if AB is equal to A times C, this doesn't mean that B is equal to C. So, these do not have to be the same. In real numbers, this is different. So for instance, if I take A times B, and this is equal to A times C, we can divide both sides by A, and we can claim that B is equal to C. This is for the reals. And this is not true for matrix, multi matrix multiplication. This is not true. So this does not hold in matrix multiplication. Sometimes, like in the first case, B will be equal to C. And that's okay. But it shouldn't be taken in general that this is true. So for instance, Let's say A is actually just the zero vector, or the zero matrix. So let's think um, zero times B is equal to zero times C. Well, of course, both sides are equal to zero, but B doesn't have to be equal to C. B can be whatever it wants, C can be whatever it wants. So this is the kind of thing that uh, you have to be careful. Okay, and then the third example, a B equals zero does not imply that A equals zero or B is equal to zero. Um, this is different again in real numbers. So if A times B is equal to zero, then one of them has to be zero. But in matrix multiplication, it just might happen that, uh, I don't have a good example. This is probably, this might work. If I have one, 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 one times negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. Um, I don't think that would work how I want it to be. So let's ignore that example. I don't have one on hand, but it could be that they're both just numbers and each combination of numbers using the row column rule just happens to add up to zero. So that could be the case. Okay, so that is matrix multiplication. Um, hopefully this is clear to you. It's pretty difficult as far as matrix operations. This is definitely the most challenging part. Um, computationally it's easy to make a mistake. Theoretically it's easy to try to multiply things that aren't supposed to be multiplied together. If you're on an exam and something's weird with your matrix and you can't get it to multiply right, it may just be that you can't multiply them together. In fact these questions here are usually thrown in as true or false questions as tricks. These are true or false trick questions. So please understand why these things can't work because you will get screwed on an exam because of these questions if you don't pay attention. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them as quickly as I possibly can.